Well, hello everyone and welcome to Canterbury Baptist Church for our Christmas morning celebration. Merry Christmas to you all. Well, it's been one very different year, hasn't it? Perhaps little good news to celebrate. But today we remember with the angel and shepherds in Luke chapter 2 that for the joy of all people, a saviour has been born in the city of David, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. Despite the uncertainty of our times, he still rules and reigns over all of us in glory. So let's turn our eyes towards the saviour today and join the angels in his praise. Let's begin with a word of opening prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this day and all it speaks about. Your promise of old to send a Messiah to your people. The fulfillment of that promise through the sending of your son. The realization of those long years of expectation. The glad tidings proclaimed by the angels the wonder and mystery of that first Christmas. Accept our praise, receive our thanksgiving, bless our celebrations, and may the wonder of the gospel come alive in our hearts this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hello girls, happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. So normally at our Christmas service at church, we play a game, don't we? Yeah. Um, but we can't do it this year. Aww. So I thought we would play a game at home for everyone to see. And maybe at home you can join in with us as well. Yay. So what we're gonna do girls, we've got three presents and you need to first of all, try and guess what the present is and then open it up and see if you were right, oh, no. okay? And you can guess at home if you think you know what the present is. So, who's going to go first? I think it's Ruby. Ruby, 
You can choose this present or this present. Which one do you want to choose first? Okay, show everyone at home. No, show the present. <laughs> That's it. What do you think it is, everybody? Have a feel, Ruby. Have a feel. It feels hard. It feels hard, okay. It sounds hard. It does sound hard. Any guesses? Um, show everyone again. Okay, what do you think? It could be like, it could be. Careful, it is breakable. Breakable <laughs> what? You're not sure? It's a glass. It's a glass. Okay, let's open it up and have a look. A glass? I think it's a water bottle. Ooh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh my goodness, Dad, how many papers did he put in it? What is it? <gasps> Perfume. Perfume, yeah, you show everyone at home so they can see. It's a bottle of perfume. It's actually nearly run out, isn't it? Yeah. And um, don't tell mummy, but I might buy her some more perfume for Christmas. Shh. <laughs> what if she watches this video? Very good. Yeah. Okay, Hope, so it's your turn. Um, you need to open this one here, yeah. but show everyone at home first. What do we <laughs> think, people? What does it look like? Hope, have a feel. It's like a box. It's a box. Yeah. Oh, cookies. Has it got something inside it? Yes. It does. does. Okay. Um, Any guesses? Any guesses at like, home? Sounds like, it sounds like it's liquid. Liquid. Oh, okay. Okay, open it up. Let's have a look. Be careful because it is breakable as well. Is this perfume? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you. You've got to open it up and it see. It has liquid, in not it? Okay. Maybe it could be mum. Ruby thinks it might be mum's hair product. <laughs> Let's see, what is it? Cowpole! <gasps> medicine! 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 Ah, interesting! Very good. Okay, and we've got one more present left. Show everyone at home. Have a feel, Ruby. It feels hard like the other one. It feels hard like the other one, okay. Like... Show everyone at home again. Have another guess. What do you think, everybody? Not sure, Ruby? Do you want to have a guess? Um, a box, maybe. A box, maybe. Okay, open it up. Let's have a look. A box? <laughs> I don't, maybe it's mummy. I don't think it's mummy. I think it might be mummy. Like, maybe chocolate coin or something. Like that. Chocolate coins, I think. Because it's hard and it's like round. Let's see, Ruby's nearly opened it. What have we got? What have we got? What have we got? Oh, I knew it! Oh, well done, Hope. Good guess. What have we got, Ruby? What are they? Coins! Chocolate coins! Chocolate coins. Okay, now you can have those later, but let's put them by the table here so everyone can see. Okay, girls, so we've got three presents here. We've got medicine, perfume, and we've got some chocolate coins. Now there is a reason why I chose these things. Do you know what the reason might be? This one, we need to get better from Corona. We need to get better <laughs> from Corona. Very good point, yeah. And we have to smell better. We have to smell better. We have to put sanitizer on because it's liquid. Oh, interesting. Perfume and like perfume, sanitizer. I actually found this out. I think perfume has alcohol in it, which is kind oh, of definitely clever. Kind of hand sanitizer. Okay. And then food from the bushes. Because we are now in lockdown, we need to get lots of food so we won't run out. For lockdown. It's a good guess, but it's not quite right. The reason I chose these three things is because they are similar to the things that Jesus got when he was born. So do you remember what he got from the from the kings? Shall I read the story to remind us? Uh, it says after they heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, 
frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So the three kings or the Magi brought to Jesus gifts. He brought to Jesus or they brought to Jesus gold, frankincense and myrrh. And so these gifts represent the gifts that the wise men brought to Jesus. Gold coins to represent the gold. Frankincense. Perfume to re represent frankincense because it was like an incense, frankincense. And myrrh. And myrrh, yeah, because myrrh, myrrh apparently could be used as medicine. So that's why I chose these three gifts. And I want to just say, girls, at Christmas, we're going to get lots of presents, aren't we? And you at home are going to get lots of presents too. But I want to remind you, when you open your presents, to think not just about the presents you're getting, but think about the presents you can give to Jesus, like the wise men gave to him when he was born. Could you worship him? Could you love him? Could you adore him? I hope you will this Christmas, and I hope everyone at home will do the same too. It begins in Bethlehem, a nativity rhyme for Christmas time. A woman called Mary was doing her chores when an angel arrived, but not through the doors. He simply appeared, and she dropped to the floor. Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. God is with me, she wondered. But what does that mean? What's this all about? Is it some kind of dream? The angel just smiled. Don't be scared. Please don't scream. God is happy with you and will bless you. God knocks down the proud and lifts up the meek and does mighty things for those who are weak and blesses the ones whose service he seeks. So sing out his praise. He's amazing. You'll soon have a baby, the angel went on, a quite special baby called Jesus, God's son. The heir of King David, he'll sit on his throne and his kingdom will last forever. But how, Mary asked, I don't understand. I'm engaged to be wed, but he's not yet my man. Trust God, said the angel. He's got it all planned. His spirit will come upon you. All night Joseph tossed, all night Joseph turned. He just couldn't sleep. He'd only just learned that Mary was pregnant. What's more, she'd confirmed that the baby she bore was not his. Joseph, don't worry. Joseph, don't weep. Lay down your head and go back to sleep. Mary's been faithful. Her love's strong and deep. And her baby is God's own son. He's the answer to all that the prophets have said, so keep your engagement, be glad, and be wed. And when Joseph woke up, that's just what he did. He took Mary to be his wife. One hump, two humps. The star watchers watched the stars go by, looking for secrets in the sky. And then they saw a special star away in the west, away off far. A king's been born, that's what it means, Judea way, or so it seems. They climbed aboard their camely beasts and set off west from their homes back east. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The star watchers followed the star. At last their journey came to an end. They parked their camels in Jerusalem. Then they went to Herod, king of the nation, to ask him for some information. O oh, king, they asked. They were quite polite. Somewhere around here on this starry night, a brand new baby king abides. Can you tell us where this child resides? Star Watch's friends, King Herod smiled. In Bethlehem you'll find the child. Would you tell me where you find him, please? The exact address would put my mind at ease. Herod, of course, told them a lie. He'd already planned for the child to die. When he found the boy, that's what he'd do. So the Star Watchers left without a clue. The shining star led them to the place, a simple house, not some fancy space. And when they saw the little boy, they gave him a pile of special toys. Presents, rather, fit for a king. A bunch of shiny golden things, a spice called myrrh, a sort of perfume, while smelling frankincense filled the room. Then in the night, they had a dream that showed them Herod's evil scheme. So they never said where the boy's house lay, but went straight home by another way. One home. Two humps, lumpity lump. The Star Watchers went with a bump and a thump. One hump, two humps, lumpity lump. The Star Watchers followed the star. So what is the point of angels and shepherds and camels and stars, you say? Is it just a nice story to tell to the children to celebrate Christmas Day? 
It's not just a story. <laughs> it's not just for kids. It's the hinge on which history swings. That Bethlehem baby grew into a man who challenged all powers and kings. He taught us that love is better than hate that serving beats being in charge. He showed us the value of each human life, the little as well as the large. And then on a cross, he died for us all, died to take all our wrongs away, and walk three days later right out of his tomb to turn death's dark night to day. And that is the good news the angels proclaimed, the heart of all Jesus would do, a new life for now, a new life forever. That's his Christmas present to you. Well, one of my favorite things to do at Christmas is to sing and play carols. And whilst Christmas 2020 has been very different to most, we still have the wonderful opportunity to sing and perhaps play Christmas carols to our hearts content in the privacy of our own spaces and homes. In fact, some will be relieved that is the case. I won't mention any names, of course. But if you were to identify one Christmas carol as your favourite, what would it be? It came upon the midnight clear, once in royal David City, silent night or away in a manger. Hark the herald angels sing, while shepherds washed, I mean watched, their flocks by night. O oh, come all ye faithful, in the bleak midwinter. We Three Kings, or the first Noel, perhaps. Apparently, Classic FM invite listeners to vote for their favourite Christmas carol every year. 
and the results for 2020 will be announced today. But Songs of Praise did something similar with the outcome sharing my own personal opinion and announcing the nation's favorite carol as O oh Holy Night. According to the Telegraph, carol experts say it's the song's pop light qualities that give it the edge over its competitors. But for me, it's the melody and chord sequence, as well as the frequency of watching Home Alone at Christmas that leads me to this conclusion. But I want to speak about another popular carol today, O Little Town of Bethlehem, and specifically one line from the carol which holds so much relevance for us in this COVID year. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. We have probably hoped and feared in equal measure this year, with fear for our lives as well as our health with fear for the life and health of others, fear for our global economy, as well as the livelihoods of so many people facing government restrictions and closures. We have hoped for good health and for the well-being of others. We have hoped for a return to what so many call the normal pre-COVID life and try to meet these hopes and fears in many different things. Christmas it was itself a hope that has been dashed, and the COVID vaccine is another recipient of our hope and fear. Philip Brooks, the lyricist for O Little Town, suggests, however, that we should look to another recipient, to the Christ born of Mary in a little town called Bethlehem. And of course, he only echoes what the Bible tells us, announced by the angel to shepherds in Luke chapter 2, that in the town of David, a saviour has been born for all the people. Anointed and chosen by God to accomplish the work of salvation, to rescue humankind from sin and mortality, as well as bring the blessings that will meet the needs of humankind. This Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes offers every one of us sure and lasting hope, taking to the cross as well as the manger to die for our sins, for our wrongdoing, and enable a lasting relationship with the creator God today, as well as with the promise of everlasting life beyond the grave. Jesus is the one who conquers all fear, not only being the mighty God of Isaiah 9 verse 6, but defeating and disarming the powers of darkness and death as he rose from the grave and triumphed over them by the cross. With faith and relationship in him, we have no need to fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, because the Lord Almighty is with us. It is thanks to this Saviour's birth, as well as his death, and resurrection, that we can cast all our cares and burdens unto God and say with confidence, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? With no one and nothing else giving us that same confidence. Jesus himself said in Matthew 24, verse 35, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. In other words, whilst all else is temporary and fading, he alone is our firm, sure and certain hope, the irreplaceable saviour of the world. My testimony for 2020 has really been about knowing the presence, stability and eternal promise of God when all else fails, breaks down, or fades away. When I have felt lonely, he has been there. When I have felt weak, he has given me strength. When I have known grief, he has comforted and reassured me. When I have needed direction and wisdom, he has inspired me and led me on. 
when I have needed hope beyond this virus, beyond illness and the inevitability of death. He has provided me with the promise of life and life in all its fullness. And the same can be true for you if you will receive him. So my prayer, as we each celebrate the Saviour's birth today and prepare for another year in 2021, is that the dear Christ would cast out our sin and enter in be born in each one of us today. And that as he abides with us, he will bring both his peace as well as his blessings from heaven. Amen. His love.
Lord, we come before you just as we are at the end of the strangest of years. We bring before you all the wounds the year has inflicted on us, all the questions the year has raised, and the wide range of emotions that have battered us. Many of us feel shaken and confused this Christmas by all the events of the year, struggling to know what to think, how to cope, but we still come before you as we are, knowing you accept us entirely and unconditionally. We enter into your presence right now with our hopes and fears for next year, with more questions, more uncertainty, as we end the year once again locked down and with a pandemic still raging around us. Most of all though, whatever has passed and whatever is to come, Lord, we want to take the opportunity today to pause, to look up and to give thanks. We give thanks because despite how shaken we feel, we can have a certainty and a sure hope. We can place all our questions, emotions and fears firmly onto a baby boy born in Bethlehem, be a sign of your love. You who so loved the world, sent your son to be our saviour, the saviour of the world should we receive him. We give thanks and more than that, we rejoice that this baby boy, his birth, life, death and resurrection means that nothing can ever separate us from your love, Lord. Not trouble or hardship or danger or pandemic, not even death itself, can separate us from your fierce, relentless love, found in the indescribable gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We give thanks that you are a redeeming God who brings the very best out of the very worst, that no situation or person is beyond your redeeming and powerful love. And through the death of your son springs abundant life because he lives, we also can live. We affirm today again, Lord, that we trust you with all that we are and all that we own. We are sorry for when we have placed our trust and hope elsewhere, in people, possessions or concepts other than you. If this year has taught us anything, it is that our only sure and unshakable foundation is found in you and you alone. Lord, we continue to ask for an end to the COVID pandemic praying that next year we would see a big breakthrough. We thank you for the vaccines currently rolling out across our country and ask that they are effective, particularly against this new strain of virus. Let us remember to give you all the glory for the vaccines. And we thank you for the brilliant scientific minds created by you who have rolled this out so fast. We ask that you would have your hand on the distribution, making sure it is quick and wise and fair. Provide and strengthen workers to administer it skillfully. We also ask that other countries that do not have the resources we do would also have access to a vaccine. We remember those today who are struggling to find any joy or peace in Christmas due to loneliness, poverty, poor health or a lack of hope for the future. Particularly those known to us who grieve today without the company of family. May they know your close comfort today, Lord, as a God who fully understands, a God who also wept and felt deep pain and grief. Help us to mourn with those that mourn today, as we trust there will be a time when we will again rejoice together. We ask for those who are despairing today, those who are on the fringes of society, who are far removed from the glitz and glamour of the Christmas lights, that they would be surprised by a new hope and joy found only in Jesus Christ, our living hope. We pray that is where it is most dark today in this country, the darkest of streets, the darkest of hearts, for those who would dare to believe that a light would be lit, a light that can never be put out, the true everlasting light of Jesus Christ, that no darkness or evil can overcome. As we spend Christmas behind closed doors, in the silence and space, we pray Christ himself would appear and be among us in a very real and tangible way. We ask for hearts that would receive him and allow him to fill all empty spaces today. In the absence of company, noise and parties, we pray the peace and presence of Christ 
would gently steal in and abide with and in us today and always. In the sorrow and sadness, we pray the real glory of Christmas would be revealed, the glory of Christ, the story of his love. And in the uncertainty of the new year, may we know the true everlasting light. And today, may all our hopes and fears be met in him as we find the most surprising joy in the midst of pain. We give thanks for this baby boy, the most wondrous gift given to humanity. The baby boy, your son, who you sent to be saviour of the world. We acknowledge that the only right response is to bow down and worship him, to come and adore him, and to welcome him into our hearts and lives this Christmas. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you for joining our celebration today. Please do take a look at our church website and social media pages for more information about the church, including a faith discovery course that explores the big questions of life and faith called Alpha. We are taking a financial offering for two charities during Christmas, with gifts being evenly split between Rising Sun, Domestic Violence and Abuse Service, their work with providing accommodation and support to 16 to 24 year old girls who were pregnant at risk of abuse, exploitation and homelessness in Kent, as well as African Pastors Fellowship who will provide solar lamps to those living on the equator of Africa for reading, mobile charging and income generation. Please use the instructions displayed on the screen at the end of this service and give online or by check using our postal address. There is no service on Sunday the 27th of December, but plenty to watch on our YouTube channel should you want to make the most of that. We pray God's blessing upon you this Christmas time and his near presence during 2021 with these words. The wisdom of the wonderful counsellor guide you. The strength of the mighty God protect you. The love of the everlasting Father enfold you. And the Prince of Peace be yours this Christmas time and forevermore. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph Oh,
glad tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Glad tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Merry Christmas, Merry everyone! Christmas.